following is a local resident producers program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. everybody, welcome to Ion Oshkosh. Cheryl Hansen, Dan Rylance here, and uh, welcome to uh, our program this evening. Wanted to show some, or uh, give some, st some statistics to you here before we get into the show. Um, national studies have identified a growing concern regarding the use of prescription drugs and so forth. We've probably seen some of those commercials on TV. Um, and in the past year, there were 36 drug-related deaths in the Fox Valley alone. 27 of those were the result of the abuse of pharmaceuticals. And in addition to that, 46% of all drug-related emergency room visits were pharmaceutical-related. And if those statistics aren't alarming enough, according to the Youth Risk Behavior Study taken last spring by students in the Oshkosh high schools, 26.7% um, said that they had taken a prescription drug without a doctor's prescription at least one time. And that leads us into tonight's program. We are very pleased to welcome to the program from the Oshkosh Police Department um, Crime Prevention Officer Joe Nichols. And seated next to him is former Crime Prevention Officer with Winnebago County uh, Sheriff's Department, and he's now a common counselor, uh, Steve Herman. So thank you to both welcome. of you for being welcome. here. Thank you. Welcome. We thank appreciate you. it very much. These statistics are, I think, shocking. I think they're very, very alarming, um, you know, because we used to hear about pot and coke and crack and what have you, um, and now we're hearing about kids taking prescription drugs. And so you guys just, well, not you so much, Steve, but <laughs> <laughs> you guys with the <laughs> police anymore. department, um, you just recently did a, a, a program at North High. It was called Good Drugs Gone Bad. Yes, it is. And, um, you know, I don't know how, what kind of a turnout you had, but um, we'd kind of like to kind of recap uh, the things that you presented there that night for folks who maybe weren't able to make it. And let's talk about, you know, this, this very serious issue and what folks can do to, you know, A, keep their kids off prescription drugs, and B, keep their homes from getting um, broken into because that's another issue that's going on with this. People are breaking into people's <coughs> homes and stealing prescription drugs. Absolutely. So um, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about you know, wh how was the turnout, first of all? Uh, we had a limited uh, uh, turnout, um, but still it's always good to get out uh, any information to anyone in the, in the community on the program. Uh, the program was developed by uh, Jason Weber and um, uh, from the town of Menasha, along with other uh, departments uh, throughout the Northeast uh, Wisconsin region. Um, and uh, it, it, it is alarming that uh, right now, uh, prescription medications are the number one drug problem in the Fox Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, it overtook uh, marijuana uh, just recently. And so it's, uh, it's going to be a continuing problem until we can get a, a grasp on it. Is, is there one or two drugs in particular, Joe, that kids seem to be targeting more than others? Or are they just not being selective or discriminating and they're just taking whatever they can get their hands on. Yeah, uh, I mean, with the, with the general population, Oxycontin, uh, Oxycodone, that's one of the big ones, uh, Vicodin, anything that makes you feel better about yourself. Uh, Painkillers. Painkillers, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't feel the pain, mm -hmm. so you take it. Um, and I always mention uh, Brett Favre was hooked on it mm -hmm. um, for, for years. Uh, 
taken Vicodin. And um, the uh, consensus is with the, with the teenagers, they'll take anything <coughs> and everything um, because huh. they honestly don't know what it is. Um, they call it a, a Pharmageddon uh, because uh, uh, unintentional overdoses uh, are, have replaced car accidents. Uh, as the leading cause of accidental deaths in 15 states and in the uh, District of Columbia. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very disturbing, I think. And, you know, so what kinds of things did you present to the people who were there, although limited in, in number? Sure. It's all about safeguarding the drugs. Um, if you can safeguard uh, your prescription medications, if you know where, where your prescriptions are, um, keeping them from the uh, from teens uh, just out of the way places um, you know they, they tell them to put it in a safe place uh, such as in your bedroom uh, the only person that should ever be in your bedroom if you have visitors is yourself mm -hmm. no one else um, so it is about safeguarding the medications um, it, it's also about how to dispose of the drugs properly um, you don't want to throw the, the drugs into the garbage um, number one, it uh, contaminates the landfill. Eighty percent of the waterways in the United States are contaminated by prescription medications and that gets into the wildlife, the fish, frogs, um, birds, and they, they've seen that, uh, like I said, in eighty percent of the waterways in, in the United States. So, so flushing them down the toilet is not smart Flushing either. them down the toilet okay. is, not, is not smart. Um, mm -hmm. We've also heard uh, people saying, okay, crush them up, uh, and then put them into a, uh, into a uh, plastic bag and then sealing them up, taping them, doing whatever, and then you can toss it in the garbage. And that's not good either because over time, both the plastic, the tape, everything starts to uh, break down mm -hmm. and thereby releasing all of the chemicals into the uh, groundwater itself. So the best thing we can do is put it into a, uh, a drug drop box which we just uh, recently uh, installed at the police department here in Oshkosh. Uh, on Earth Day, April 22nd of this year, uh, we dedicated the drug drop box, um, talking to Sergeant Kaiser, uh, who's uh, Becky Kaiser, who uh, removes the drugs uh, pretty much now weekly. Um, she's removing uh, a lot of, a great quantity of the prescription medications uh, out, of the, um, out, out of that box. So it's, a, uh, it's working wonders. People are using it. Uh, there are sometimes people aren't using it properly, um, disposing of uh, uh, needles. Um, we've, we've, we've actually found uh, drug paraphernalia inside the drug, uh, drug drop box, which you know, I guess it's better there than out on the street, but still um, you know, it's, it's used primarily for uh, the uh, prescription medications and over-the-counter drugs that are, are expired. Well, um, I, I think these drop boxes are a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I tend to use up the things as they're prescribed and mm -hmm. then the prescription's gone. All I have to dispose of is the, is the container. But, um, you know, for someone who is using the drop box, you know, have these drop boxes ever been targeted by, by kids or people who are hooked on drugs? And how well secured are they? Well, the, the one at our police department is well secured. Um, it's uh, under uh, a camera. Uh, it's, uh, it's got the uh, camera on it all the time, 24-7. Um, we can identify who comes in. Uh, also, it's right out from our front lobby. Okay. So we have a, uh, it's a 24-hour staffed uh, front desk. So uh, that person can look out and see what's going on okay. inside. All right, excellent. Um, go ahead. Um, Okay, they're getting their drugs, but aren't a lot of kids also stealing things from cars and, and homes to buy drugs? Isn't that part of what they're doing too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, our neighborhood's been hit. Well, I've been hit. Sure. Our neighborhood's been hit twice, and, and uh, our fault in part, we're not being careful to unlock right. cars and things like that. But I assume that they're stealing in order to get money to buy drugs. Right. Yep. You know, and that's, that's part of where I'm involved. I'm, in, I'm on the committee for rethink which is part of the good drugs gone bad coalition and it's now become a statewide 
program. Mm -hmm. um, we think sponsored several different training sessions for law enforcement officers, social workers, school workers to come in and learn about this mm -hmm. program, Good Drugs Gone Bad. And part of that, as you were saying, Dan, is um, you know we it's very common for, for citizens to go pick up their prescriptions at Walgreens, Walmart, wherever they get them, right. leave them in the car and do some more shopping. Right. So now there's that crime of opportunity. Right. And so we as a coalition are constantly working with parents, grandparents, and anybody that will listen about how to protect their prescription drugs, whether they're shopping or at home. And, and that is, is um, Officer Nichols mentioned. Um, and then just being aware of how many pills do you have? Yeah. You know, a lot of times you get a 90 day supply and, and you kind of keep track that, okay, I've used 15 or 20 and all of a sudden there's 30 or 40 yeah. missing. You know, so it's that inventory piece also, because again, prescription drugs, a lot of kids and adults are using them, don't think they're as dangerous as marijuana, as LSD, as coke, oh. as some of the other dangerous drugs, sure. but they are. Yeah. And, and then part of this we found in the investigation side of this, when we were looking into putting this program together, is that these kids are having what's called farming parties, where everybody just brings whatever they can from home. Huh. They throw them in a bowl and it's like a candy dish going around, like a Skittle dish. And they're just popping these pills left and right. Yeah, and they don't even know what they're those. taking. Because they don't know no, if it's oxycodone. They don't know if it's, if it's got uh, other harmful drugs in there. You know, it, mostly they're looking for the painkiller uh -huh. side of it. But um, that's a real problem. And as the council addressed that, um, we were asked to pass an ordinance several uh, meetings ago on K2, which is another right. kind of look-like drug. And... Um, we're now gonna have Rethink come in and do a workshop with the council so that we're aware of all of the problems, all the concerns that are out there in the community so that as uh, ordinances come in front of the council, we are more educated on sure. why the police department wants these uh, laws on the books and how we can reduce the uh, potential uh, drug abuse of younger kids and, and, and adults because they're also driving too. You know, sure. we, we spend so much time focusing on the operating while intoxicated but a lot of these people are uh, under the influence of drugs too. Yeah. Sure. You know, how can a parent, if, if, if you've got kids in the house and you're on some kind of medication, how can you keep your medication safe and secure from your own children? I mean, I think we probably all grew up in a, in a household where you had one bathroom, maybe mm -hmm. two, you had a medicine sure. cabinet and mm -hmm. everybody's medicines were in there. That was a long time ago, times have changed a lot, but still you don't have necessarily a way to keep things secured from your kids. What do you recommend? Well, you can keep the, uh, like I said, you keep the drugs in a place that only you would know or have mm -hmm. access to or should have access to. Um, if uh, in the bedroom, uh, they suggest keeping it in a, in a drawer um, for your unmentionables um, due to the fact who else would have access to that but yourself? Kids would go through that, wouldn't they, though? I mean, well, if mom and dad aren't home and they're hard up, aren't yeah. they going to well, do that? Well, one suggestion at the training when they gave it was to actually use a lockbox, especially mm -hmm. if you suspect that you're your missing are, medications yeah. or you're suspecting mm -hmm. or you're, you know your, your, your kids are going to have some friends over, whether you yeah. know they're involved in any illegal activity or not, you got high prescription drugs such as, you know, oxycodone and those types of things, painkillers, lock them up. Okay. Most, most people have a firebox or some type of a lock box in their home. Put them in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, uh, I know we talked about the painkillers being the big thing, but are there other things that these kids, I mean, you talked about, you know, these parties that they're mm -hmm. having where they're right. just throwing everything in a bowl. Is there anything that's off limits that, that these kids aren't really interested in? No, everything I think is fair game. Okay. Yeah, um, and I mean they they, uh, they have a, a term called robo tripping, which is somebody will take uh, a, a bottle of Robitussin, and they'll drink the bottle of Robitussin because it has the alcohol in it <laughs> to get that high, uh, to feel good, and so nothing's off limits. Um, the, the thing that the kids don't understand is that it's it's dangerous. You take too much of something, um, could, it could have an adverse effect on the body and um, could, could kill them. 
especially if they're mixing it with something else. Absolutely. You know that they've right. taken. A lot of cases yeah. they're mixing it with alcohol. So mm -hmm. now you now you you know alcohol is a depressant. A lot of these medications are that way because you know the, most of the time when you're taking those painkillers, it's because you had a surgery or mm -hmm. you, you know knee surgery or back surgery. Who knows what it? But you're taking it so that you you kind of slow your whole body cycle down. Now add alcohol to that, and then put the drugs in there. Um, because every prescription bottle says do not have alcohol. Yeah. You know, so you know that there's there's those deadly factors. So now you put those things together, and that's why we're finding these these um, deaths out of kind of out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, Dan. I, I was just going through this uh, 2009 Wisconsin Youth Risk Survey. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some good things. I mean, smoking is down. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Um, I think alcohol is down. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I mean, yeah, the amount of usage is down. But what 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 came out of that survey for me, being a retired law enforcement officer, was just the younger ages that these kids People are, are starting yeah. to try it. Yeah. If nothing else, it doesn't mean they're addicted yeah. to it yeah. or they're hooked on it, but they're trying it. And and the access. That's one thing um, we're thinking we'll, with rethink that we're working on is is really working with uh, the different. Um, Providers, you know uh -huh. your grocery stores, your your, your uh, convenience stores, um, even even the um, taverns uh -huh. are are coming to trainings that we're putting on uh -huh. to to learn how to better um, identify these kids coming in trying to buy things uh -huh. that are illegal. You know, ask for that driver's license, look at it, uh -huh. because it's you know Wisconsin now has put a lot of things on the driver's license that tells you that they're a minor or that they're under 21. And you know, take the driver's license from the person, not just have them show it to you, but take it and actually look at it. Um, so I think education is, is the biggest thing. Um, earlier this week, I met with Randy Hopper, Senator Hopper, and with the Rethink Coalition from um, Winnebago County and uh, a coalition in Fond du Lac. And we talked about you know, the to tobacco tax, for example. Leave that money in that fund you know the state's been notorious for robbing one fund for another fund for another to cover mm -hmm. the deficit in the budget mm -hmm. well when the money is specifically targeted or legislation specifically targeted for like prescription drug issues or tobacco issues leave that money there so that education can be done uh, advertising can be done because a lot of these prescription drugs a lot of these you know how many how many commercials a night do we see on tv People are taking constantly medication for one illness to another illness to the next, and so it's it's when we say good drugs, they're good drugs for people that need them. They're bad drugs for the people that get them and use them illegally. And that, that's the concern we have. Well, I think the you know the commercial that we've probably at this table all seen, and uh, I'm assuming a lot of viewers too is. Uh, this, this commercial with his husband and wife, and you know, it's and the tagline at the end is "Don't be a patsy," and her name is actually Patsy, mm -hmm. and she's taking the labels off all the all the medications, and she and her husband can't figure out whose yeah. medications are what. But I guess in a case like this, and that's probably the message is, you know, not only can you not figure out then whose drugs are whose, but the kids aren't being discriminating at all in what they want. They don't care what they're getting. That's right. Yeah. So you can take all the labels off that you want, they're just going to grab. Do they take the whole bottle or, or are no, they just taking no. a few out of each thing no. so that it's not so noticeable? In, in most cases. Now obviously, you know, in the last couple of years we've had some armed robberies of pharmacies and things and there they're taking as much as they can get. But usually if it's a son or a daughter or someone in the home stealing from within the home, they're taking, you know, five, ten, so they're not as noticeable mm -hmm. out, of the, out of the bottle. You, you know, you're talking about the commercial, there's that other one where the mother's driving with the teenage son in the car and they stop and pick up the prescription drugs and she just, and the son says, oh, ma, you're back acting up. Yep, I've had terrible pain. So he knew right away it was her pain pills. They get home, she throws them on the counter, she goes in another room and he opens the bottle and takes a bunch I right away out of a brand one. new prescription. That's that that's commercial put together by the National Drug uh, Coalition. But, you know, that's how easy it is. Yeah. You know, and, and take, take seniors. Most seniors are on some type of, you know, medication maybe for high cholesterol, blood pressure, anxiety, who knows, dementia issues. Mm -hmm. And so they got the pill bottles, you know, laid out with what, what they take on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. So the kids come over for Christmas or whatever, 
oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And the medication's sitting out on the counter, you know, in the bathroom, and the, now they can take one out of each one of them. Grandma and Grandpa won't remember. Mm. You had mentioned, Steve, about, um, you know, robberies of, um, you know, pharmacies mm -hmm. and so forth. There have also been some home invasions right. and strong-armed robberies of, mm -hmm. of people for prescription drugs, yes? Sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do you have any statistics on that? Uh, in the last uh, two years um, total, uh, we've had uh, four home invasions uh, throughout the Fox Valley. Okay. Um, where pharmaceuticals were tar with a target. Uh, two dozen home burglaries in the Fox Valley where pharmaceuticals were the target. And then uh, eight uh, armed robberies of businesses, uh, three in Oshkosh here, uh, where it was uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, okay. And they, of course, they went after the pharmacies. And uh, for Wisconsin, um, we're, um, I have this uh, statistic here that uh, out of all the robberies, uh, we're, we're in the top 10 states for pharmacy robberies. Um, at 7% of the total. Um, and uh, we're actually beating uh, California, but it has 5%. Oh, so, that's mm -hmm. kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is, uh, kind of a surprising number. Go ahead, you look like you yeah. wanted to say something. <laughs> What's your appraisal effectiveness of DARE as a program? Does it work? Uh, for the city, uh, we've got uh, We've got four or five DARE officers that go in. Uh, they teach the fifth graders to make sure that, um, you know, that they, they're aware of uh, alcohol drug abuse, mm -hmm. uh, trying to be a, a positive in the community um, and not, you know, take the alcohol, not take the drugs. Say no mm -hmm. when, the, when the time comes around. Um, so you think it's an effective program? Uh, from what our DARE officers say, yes. It is, a, uh, it is an effective program. It, it gets the word out there. Um, not to take uh, the drugs and alcohol. Um, I, you know, there are, there are times when I say, okay, well, you, you may be exposing mm -hmm. the kids to these drugs and alcohol that they may have never heard of, be of it right. before. But if they, if you know, if they get the word out and the message hits home uh, that no, you shouldn't be doing the drugs or alcohol, um, it, it's gonna it's gonna do a world of good for them. What do you think? Well, you know, I. I, w I was not a DARE officer when okay. I was in law enforcement, but I do believe that overall the program has f weathered a long standing time. So I think statistically you could take the numbers and do anything you want with them, but I think it, if, it's, if it's lasted as long as it has, it's got to have had an effect on kids. And I think anytime you can put officers in the classroom, interacting with kids, giving them positive role models, giving them some opportunity, it's better than doing nothing. And, and so I think it is an effective program. Um, just, just a couple weeks ago, city council members had an opportunity to go into elementary schools, read, read for example, and read to kids. Again, a positive role model, doing things with young kids, showing them that um, there are good things to do out here. Reading, uh, officers in the classrooms, I think anytime you do that, that's a positive. I guess just play devil's advocate for a minute. Um, mm -hmm. U.S. Department of Education prohibits schools from sending its spending its funding on DARE because the program is completely ineffective in reducing the alcohol and drug use. That's the conclusion of the U.S. General Accounting Office, the U.S. Surgeon General, National Academy of Science, etc. So a lot of the national groups, you know, I know it must yep. be hard for you guys in a way to say that maybe the program doesn't work, but there is some pretty good evidence that it's not a real effective program. But there's been no alternative programs coming forward either. So it, I look at it as, you know. Better uh, than nothing? It's better than nothing, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. And I, I, again, putting that officer in the school, I think is, is just that much bet more effective. Than, and at least maybe one student doesn't turn to drugs and alcohol. That's one student maybe we see. How about five kids learning about drugs and going finding it? Well, you and, and you, you don't know that either. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, I, I'm just... Sure. And it could, be, it could be a lot of things. It could be what type of home environment do they sure. come from. Do their parents use drugs and alcohol in the open? And so if mom and dad do it, it must be okay for me to do it. And so that, that's a tough thing. And, and, and I, you know, I know that the D.A.R.E. program has been under attack for mm -hmm. quite some time. And from, you know, a lot of different um, entities, as you just mentioned, are attacking the program and it's not effective. And, and I, I think it's a dollars and cents thing because it is expensive to mm -hmm. put, to have officers sure. trained mm -hmm. for one sure. and then putting them into the schools. But I think that if we don't 
do something, then we're just kind of saying we, you know, we're ignoring a problem that's out there. You remember uh, Nancy and, and Ronald Reagan's war on drugs program that they started? Yep. It was a big yep. thing of mm -hmm. Nancy. And you drive around a town, and every school had a sign out on their lawn that said, a drug-free school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My kids used to come home from school yeah. and they'd say, you know, Dad, that's a bunch of... <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, and yeah. So you get a little cynical sometimes mm -hmm. about sure. these things because everybody knows that it's not a drug-free school. So why are they putting those signs up there? Yeah. Well, it's always Positive a messages. You know, it, 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 it's, it's kind of almost like the billboard. Why, why do we drive up and down 41 and it's billboard after billboard? It, it's an advertising. You still want to be able to, 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 for the kids that don't want to get involved, for the kids that are really trying to stay away from drugs and alcohol, gives them that positive that okay. our school cares, our school's trying. Um, you know, is it a perfect? No. And um, so... My son was a quarterback in high school. He said he preferred the drunk linemen rather than the drug linemen of the other high school because his 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 linemen were better on on drugs than they were. <laughs> oh boy! Well, I mean, Jeez. I mean that's the reality. Yeah. Of, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not. I'm not making this sure. up. I mean, yeah. this is sophomore juniors and and, and seniors in high school. That, that, uh, mm -hmm. well, anyway, yeah. enough wow. of that. But. All right. Back to you. Uh, Prosecution's <laughs> over. <laughs> um, can we go back to the uh, the home? invasions and, and thefts from the homes, mm -hmm. um, how do they determine that those crimes were committed for drugs, uh, it, you know, pharmaceutical type drugs? Um, you know, are they taking other things too or are they just going after the prescription drugs? Pre pretty much just after prescription drugs. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now see that surprises me. If you're going to take the time to break into someone's home, Take whatever you can get your hands on, I guess, would be my logic. Well, that's what's happening in my neighborhood. They're, they're stealing computers, garments from, and, and uh, hi-fi equipment from cars, and they're, they're moving them within 12 or 20 hours. You can't get them back. And then they take the money that they get, which is probably 10 cents on a dollar, and then they go buy drugs with them. So it, but it's that's different than what this is. Here they're just taking the drugs I understand themselves, that, but I'm just right? saying that this is related yeah. to it. Yeah. It's not just stealing drugs. It's stealing other things to buy drugs. Yeah, of course yeah. they're not doing that in these cases. What, and what so they, f they found out. Maybe kids breaking in yeah. there and mm -hmm. adults maybe breaking right. into homes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. When, we're, when they put, we're putting a program together in a partnership with the Office of Justice Assistance, they found that that's all they were taking, Cheryl, was the drugs. They were leaving the, at the you know. So we're thinking that those that do that type of break-in are those that are actually addicted and all they need is that next fix. Do we think they mm -hmm. know that they're in the house too? That they've been around or they have friends that are... Well, it's a possibility. It's pretty random just to... You know, it's, it's a possibility. <laughs> um, I know before I left the Sheriff's Office, we made an arrest on a gentleman on the south end of Winnebago County and he was targeting homes by watching the homes. Okay. And he knew that seniors are living there more apt. He kind of had an idea of their patterns and things, and he had empty pill bottles in his car, and that's all he had. Mm -hmm. huh. He didn't have stereos, he didn't have TVs, yeah. he didn't have other things they were stealing. He was strictly stealing prescription drugs. Huh. Well, although, when they're breaking into homes, they can actually get their hands on the drugs. Here, they're probably buying the drugs with the money that they're getting yeah, from absolutely. selling this stuff. Absolutely. But they're buying them from someone who's already got them. Maybe from stealing from someone yeah, else. I'm just saying that the two are related. So, oh, they're related. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I just I find uh, it yeah. interesting that yeah. they'll steal stuff yeah. like in your neighborhood, yeah. right. but here they'll break into homes yeah. right. and they're leaving stuff. Right. But yeah. maybe that's what they're doing. Then they're right. buying them from the pusher over here right. um, and the salesman. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we also found in the investigative side of of this this problem that that uh, older people, say people our ages or 30s, 40, any age really, are doctor shopping too. They get a prescription for a back injury or say they have a back injury and the doctor gives them. A week later they're now in the ER complaining about the same injury. Now they want more sure. oxycodone. You know, and they'll get it because it's an ER visit. And all of a sudden, so we're working on the legislative side to, and the, with the pharmaceutical companies and the, and, and the pharmacies to pass some type of law that would they be able to check that that you were just in to say mercy medical center a week ago and you got a prescription for oxycodone now you're at aurora you're not gonna be able to get it 
So there, there is some work on the legislative side of this thing and the advocacy side to try to reduce this that people can't shop, shop doctor to doctor to get prescriptions. And that's and that's it, another avenue we're focusing on. And it's not even prescription drugs. It, it's over-the-counter stuff, too. Sure. Do you know that you know if you've got a cold and you've got sinus problems, you cannot, if, first of all, you have to show an ID mm -hmm. to buy the sinus pills. Nope. Um, whether it be Claritin D or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, and then you you can't buy it again within a certain correct. period. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I find that so frustrating. <laughs> I mean that that mm -hmm. is really right. frustrating because you know if you've got you know I tend to when I get a cold it tends to hang on mm -hmm. you know and if you got to breathe you got to breathe right <laughs> yeah. you know and yeah. to not be able to buy something again because you've run out. Um, that's really frustrating. Well, well, and that's a protection thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, they found that o even over-the-counter has a, a high enough volume of a certain type of drug that they can crush and um, make drugs out of and snort it and do whatever and get high off of it. So um, they had to put it behind the counter and are now tracking how many times you come in. I mean, I take Claritin D and I take, a, I, I take it um, through a prescription and I, I'm allowed to get you know a certain amount during a certain time and then I, after four months I have to get a new prescription. Yeah. And I've been on it for years, but it's a protection thing for out and, you know, the way we want to deal with these types of drugs because again, they, even though they're over the counter, they can be used illegally too. Yeah. Just times have changed, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> it's so well, they, frustrating. You know, they have a survey that uh, seven out of the ten people that have a doctor visit, uh, they'll get a prescription uh, filled by a doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's why. And every every month in the state of Wisconsin, we have five million prescriptions filled, mm -hmm. and that's per month. So I mean, the, the drugs are are out there, mm -hmm. and if somebody wants them and they can find them, they'll they'll take them. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else on, on good drugs gone bad or drugs in general or DARE or before we move on to, um, I do want to talk about crime prevention and neighborhood watch and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's good. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Was there anything else that you want to Yeah, just uh, safeguard your drugs as, as best possible. Okay. Yeah. And no if you have to dispose of them, use the drop box. And use the, the drug drop box. Are, is that the only one in town, Joe, or is there it, another one somewhere? There's the only one in Oshkosh. Okay. Um, we have, uh, there's going to be two in Nina. There's one in Appleton, one in Green Bay, uh, one in, uh, I think, Chilton, and one in Fond du Lac as well. And, and are they all in the police departments, or whereabouts are they? Yeah, they're, they're, okay. they're all in a uh, secure area. Um, I know that also the hospitals do have uh, take-back programs. So okay. that uh, if you have a prescription medication that's expired or you no longer take it, um, you can take it to the hospital if they have a take back program. Okay. So. All right. Good. Um, well, then let's let's talk about the um, neighborhood watch program. Um, on a recent show, um, I did have on Thatcher Peterson, who's the um, the newly elected president of the. Um, neighborhood Watch Executive Board, I believe, was, was the name of it. And we, we talked about the program a little bit, um, you know, from his perspective. And um, I w as long as you were here, I wanted to kind of pick sure. your brain and talk a little bit about it from, uh, from a policing perspective. And for anyone who may have missed that show, um, you know, just kind of give us a recap of what the Neighborhood Watch program is. Sure. Uh, neighborhood Watch uh, is about being neighborly. That's about it. Um, it's watching after your neighbor, your neighborhood. Um, in reporting any and all suspicious activity. Um, we have a, a lot of the neighborhoods um, in, in Oshkosh still, and I'm sure throughout the county, that uh, does not have a neighborhood watch established yet. Um, people will say if they live in, a, in an area where there's not a lot of crime going on, why do we need, need a neighborhood watch? Um, and it's just for that reason. Um, you don't want to wait until the crime occurs, then all of a sudden say, hey, now we need a neighborhood watch. It uh, prevent, you know, an ounce of prevention, you know, as they always say, is worth a world of good. Um, and it is just taking that ounce of prevention. Um, you have a neighborhood watch. Um, I'm sure that somebody's in the neighborhood all the time. Um, they, they report a suspicious person, a, sp a suspicious car. It doesn't take much for an officer to drive by five minutes. They find the vehicle, they find the person. What are you doing here? 
they can investigate it. Um, and it's a, it's a great thing. Um, it's, uh, it's been going on since colonial times when they had watch, uh, watch uh, men out well, watching after the land and the, and the, the farms and the, and the homes. Um, in, the, in the 60s, uh, in Queens, New York, they started small, a uh, small group started getting, uh, reporting suspicious activity after a, a lady by the name of Kitty Genovese was uh, raped and murdered uh, in front of 12 witnesses, and they didn't do nothing about it. And then in 1972, the National Service Association with the Police Chiefs Association uh, worked together uh, in response to numerous burglaries going on. Um, and they formed a, a coalition between the, uh, the neighbors, uh, the citizens, and the police department and had the citizens start reporting crimes. So it's, uh, it's been going on since, th that, that's pretty much the formal group in 1972. Um, and, uh, you know, they always put out the question, there's a uh, complete idiot's guide to uh, home security, asks the question, uh, who are the most important crime fighters uh, in your community? And that's your neighbor. Um, because of the fact that um, it, it is your neighbor that can report a crime to the police department if you're not there. And, and you yourself can report it for your neighbor if you happen to see something suspicious. Sure. And um, it, it's a great program. Um, and it, it does a, a world of good. It's been working hand in hand with our team policing. Um, I was going to ask you about that. Have mm -hmm. you seen, um, and I think that's a really great concept that mm -hmm. the chief has come up with and that you all are doing. Um, and it kind of gets us back to the old days of um, the, the cop on the beat and knowing yeah. who your neighborhood cop is and that kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I think, a very good thing. And, um, but, you know, since that's been instituted, have you seen an increase, perhaps, in neighborhood watches? Yes. Uh, in the last year, we've added 60 neighborhood watch groups. Wow. And, um, and it's been going very well. And you had Thatcher Peterson on uh, mm -hmm. one of the last shows. Um, he's the president of uh, the executive board. Um, we have a vice president, uh, Jeff Decker. Um, we have a, uh, the treasurer is uh, Jim Murray. And then uh, our secretary is Tina Risty. Um, it's a... Um, it's a great group to work with, and they've been they've been fabulous in working uh, with the newer neighborhood watches. In fact, um, just today we had a, a meeting uh, with a new group on Irving Ave, and uh, the executive board met with them. Uh, they had a, uh, a a nice little sit down. Uh, they're they're planning a, a neighborhood party where they can get the people together when it's warmer out. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. They don't want to have one outside right <laughs> no. now. Have one <laughs> <in the orchard. laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Somebody can so. hold. She's it. cold night tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is cold. Uh, yeah. Um, well, and it, and it helps you get to know your neighbors. You know, I mean, mm. when we were all growing up, I think we all knew who our neighbors were. Mm. The, the parents would hang out together and do things. The kids would hang out and do things. You really don't see much of that anymore. And it's, you mm. know, yeah. I, I guess I'm getting older because I keep hearkening back tonight to, yeah. well, you know, the good old days. And I, that's when I know. test. I'll put that to the test, uh, people to the test when we go to the neighborhood uh, citywide meetings and I'll ask them, you know, or, or a new group forms and I ask them, okay, um, tell me, can you name your neighbors five houses to your right and five houses to your left and, and can you do that on both sides of the street? I said as a kid uh, growing up, I said if I knew, uh, my mom and dad knew if I did something wrong five houses down because they were on the phone right away. Yeah. And Mothers saying, knew everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're a different society, though. I, you know, when I, at the Sheriff's Office, when we did the neighbor watch meetings and that, it was the same thing. You know, the, the concept, uh, you know, we're a 24-7 society now. You know, mm -hmm. people are working, some working two jobs, different shifts. You know, when we were growing up, our mothers were mostly home, you know, and so the, you did get to know your neighbors more. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even now, what, what is it, a true neighborhood? You know, I'm excited with... The neighbor watch growth uh, as a city council because um, bringing neighbor works into the city as we're going to be doing the partnership that's going to be working hand in hand with the neighborhood watch and there might even be a little switch to the word watch to neighborhood association mm -hmm. and we're trying to to focus on developing good neighborhoods 
in good neighborhoods, not only having a nicer looking home, maybe uh, a little more pride of ownership, but getting to know your neighbors. And you're in association because you associate with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. You do things with your neighbors in your neighborhoods, which will re should reduce crime in your neighborhood. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the concept kind of all flows together okay. with that. Um, there's a parent organization that used to meet once every six months, and now it's meeting every other month. Every other month. Okay. Now I called some people this before the show, and they said they're unsure or are unclear whether this is a local group, whether they should go to all these meetings, which is every other month, but also have all their meetings. Yeah. And their response is, that's a hell of a lot of meetings for working families. Now, is the idea that they're supposed to go to these bi-monthly meetings, the, the big group, or they should just concentrate on their local group and have their monthly meetings, or both? Yeah, the bi-monthly meetings are to, to disseminate information okay. that the executive board may get together in the in the odd months that we okay. do, that there's not a city meeting, mm -hmm. um, and it and it is it's it's really good information, especially with the infancy of the executive board. Um, they've worked very hard uh, to okay. establish some some bylaws, some rules. Okay. Uh, what is it that the executive board can do for them? Okay. And, and they want to hear from all of the captains um, that are out there. Um, right now, uh, we have 185 block watches in this city. Okay. And we would like to, you know, our goal was 150 this year. We'd like to see it go up, you know, if we could, one watch for every block. Of course, it's probably unrealistic, but still we can set our goals high. Now, with the, with the people that don't attend all of the meetings, the bi-monthly meetings, um, they're missing out on some very good information in regards to the structure of Neighborhood Watch, how they can do it. We're not asking them, if they attend a meeting once a year, that would be great because okay. at least the information is getting out there. But we would still like to have them meet with their neighbors because communication breakdowns is the number one failure for a Neighborhood Watch. Once, once that block, uh, once the uh, neighborhood captain uh, stops communicating with the, with the neighbors, things just seem to disintegrate. And we have some very, very, very strong neighborhood uh, uh, watch captains out there that will, I mean, they're creating newsletters. Um, uh, Jeff Decker creates a newsletter in the Stevens Park District and prints it out, sends it out to everybody. He does a fantastic job in doing that. Uh, Thatcher Peterson um, does the same thing uh, when he coordinates these meetings. Um, uh, Celeste Hathaway uh, on the west side of town. Um, you know, I could go on and on yeah. with the with the with the names here, but all these all these people have taken a, a sincere interest in Neighborhood Watch and want to see it succeed, and want to see every neighborhood succeed as theirs are. And and in these meetings, they are important because good information does get disseminated. Um, we do have. Uh, uh, we, we do have different people coming from the city. Um, soon we'll be having uh, different spokespeople, such as uh, the fire department come in. Uh, we'll have uh, possibly Andrew Prickett come in from uh, the housing inspections. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they can start talking about things. You know, well, what if there's a problem with, with somebody's house and they're not taking care of it? Um, there's police over there all the time. You know, these answers they can find, you know, not only by calling the police department, but showing up to the meetings. I belonged to a group that met, used to meet at Webster Stanley Elementary School mm -hmm. when Sergeant Kaiser won, not his wife, but sure. Okay, yeah. he was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, he sent emails to everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. His replacement dropped the ball. We quit getting him. Okay. And that really sort of weakened that group. Um, they were, he spoiled us. Yeah. <laughs> he really did, yeah. incredible. He, I mean, yep. he was there all the time. He went. To, we got every crime report from him. He, we gave all our emails, everyone, yep. and we got it from him. And then his successor said, "Well, you know, you must not be getting the emails because you're you're not hooked up anymore." And There's a job for you to do, Dan. And they Pick said, up the ball and run with and it." And they yeah. said, <laughs> "Well, no, we found out it was actually a city problem. That the, the, the problem on not sending the emails wasn't resting with the receivers." It was, but anyway, that's that was you know that for me that left sort of a uh, you know a uh, he but he did spoil us and maybe it was unrealistic to expect successors to do all the work he did but he was incredible right but the, with uh, with the chief's team policing philosophy still it it is 
the neighborhoods, uh, with the officers that are in the neighbor, uh, right. neighborhoods, uh, they, they, they're to take the ball and run with it okay. um, and say, hey, you know, we're going to get this information out to you. Um, all the information, uh, I think we've opened up more information now than we ever had at the police department. Um, we have uh, the emails that go out. Uh, my media releases now go out to all the team email lists so that if things are, are happening at that time, you know, we're getting it out there. Um, there's Nixle, uh, which is a new program whereby if you have a, uh, a cell phone mm -hmm. or you have email, um, we, we put it out on the computer and it's shot right out to your cell phone uh, just in case because we have community alerts, uh, we have uh, traffic alerts. Um, you know, if we had Nixle during the floods, I think a lot of people would have avoided the flooded areas instead of, you know, going there and driving through them. I'll give you another example. Mm -hmm. About a month ago, there's this car that's parked in our block two or three nights. And evidently, they're not, they're not ticketing the, the 2 to 5 a.m. people anymore. You have to call it in if, if... Oh, you have to call it in? Well, you don't necessarily yeah. have to, but I mean, they're, they're not on every street every right. night. Mm -hmm. so. so anyway, I, I got up and I called. I said, you know, there's been this car out parked in, in our, our block after the robbery. So I said, for like three nights, here's the license number. And the response was, well, why don't you go talk to him? <laughs> I said, huh? Yeah. If I knew who he was, I wouldn't be calling you. I have no idea who this person is. He blew me off. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean, then you ask for a supervisor. Um, and you ask for a police supervisor, and yeah. the supervisor will then... It must have been a bad morning for him or something. Well, but, you know, I thought, well, yeah. Jim, I'm trying to be a citizen. I'm, I'm, I'm reporting what I saw. And he said, well, go talk to the guy. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, no, that's not your job to do that. <laughs> and that and that is for you to call and have a police supervisor yeah, okay, to well, take control of it. And car hasn't showed up lately, but I'll do that. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about Nixle, though. Now, have has that system been used at all since its implementation? Um, we have had uh, Nixle with the, uh, we had a crash out on Jackson Street. Okay. Um, it was a serious one. Roads were closed down. Uh, we did use that uh, at that time for Nixel. Um, it, I, I mean, it's just in its infancy as well. Um, and I'm not sure what the totals were. I know that the last time I talked to our IT director, Tony Newman, he stated that there was over 100 people signed up already. Does um, it go out to everyone or like, or would it have just gone out to people in that little area? And the reason I ask mm -hmm. is because I did sign up when it was first sure. implemented. I've not gotten anything mm. at all on okay. it since then. So either it was just maybe targeted for those people in that immediate area or maybe it's not working right. I don't know. Yeah. With so. with the with that crash we did we did put it out area wide. And there you can subject it to one part of the city or another mm -hmm. and then put out just that message there. That I think would be more or less for um, areas that may have a uh, Possibly you live in that area, and there's a a, a, da a dangerous situation going on um, that we can we can target that area immediately. Later, we might expand it out um, to the city. Um, but for the community, uh, we have put out messages for uh, the neighborhood watch meetings, um, different types of meetings as well. Okay. So. Okay. Um, you asked an interesting question before, Steve, oh. and it's on my <laughs> mind too. Okay. You know, what is a neighborhood? Yes, I question. think of, because if you're going to look at starting a neighborhood watch, say, say Dan and I live in the neighborhood together mm -hmm. and we want to we start a neighborhood watch. Okay, I would think people on my side of the street mm -hmm. and on the other side of the street, but I'm also thinking, okay, I can't be watching two blocks down, so maybe just mm -hmm. in a one block radius. But that's my, mm -hmm. my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. What what do you consider to be, in the police department, a, a neighborhood watch area? How oh, large of an area? That's a good question. Uh, but but the but the neighborhood, you want to keep uh, as a, as a captain, you want to keep it small, um, and we we suggest fifteen to twenty houses, okay. um, whereby you're not overwhelmed mm -hmm. if you have a newsletter or if you've got to get information disseminated out. Um, it's uh, it's very nice just to have. Um, those 15 to 20 houses. Um, we have uh, the Stevens Park District where there are, uh, you know, Jeff Decker does a great job, but he's got hundreds of houses and he tries to get to each and every one of them with co captains. Um, and that may be, you know, he can do it mm -hmm. young, but, uh, you, know, if you're, you know, if you live in a nice neighborhood, 
Um, and it, like I say, like you said, if you keep it on your side of the street and on the opposite side in that one block area, that's plenty. And, and maybe a couple neighbors like behind you too? Possibly, If yes. you know them? So. See, my definition of neighborhood would be quite different. Mm -hmm. um, I live at the corner of East Parkway and Monroe. My neighborhood is the YMCA, mm -hmm. uh, the Boys and Girls Club, which is across mm -hmm. the street, Condon Oil, Webster Stanley School, where we mm -hmm. vote and stuff, sure. where the kids come every day from Webster Stanley Elementary School, they go up to the Boys and Girls Club. So my activity, my neighborhood is where, what people do Mm -hmm. in, in my group, and it's bigger than just looking out. From your standpoint, I can fully understand that. But I know what goes on at the Boys and Girls Club, what goes on at the Y, sure, sure. Uh, what goes on at Webster Stanley, because those traffic patterns and those people come by my house every day. Mm -hmm. So for me, my neighborhood is bigger. Uh, so I guess it, it, uh, it uh, really depends on what kind of a neighborhood you live in as far as how sure. big the neighborhood watch program sure. could be. Mm -hmm. Well, take an take so. example out in the county, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. A lot of our, we, when, I, when I organized the neighbor watches for the sheriff's office, we had some that were subdivisions, like a block at a time, but then we had some where they were a half mile apart from their nearest neighbor. So we just took yeah. the whole road, <laughs> yeah. in a sense. But there again, out in the county, it's a little different because of all the farmland and different, different aspects. So a neighbor watch out there is run on totally different than it is in the city. That's why the numbers are different. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, sure. we have, uh, when I left uh, a year ago, and it's hard to believe it's been a year already, <laughs> but uh, when I left there, there was over 950 homes participating in Neighborhood Watch. I don't mm -hmm. know what Officer Gessrey's numbers are now, but I know she has added some Neighborhood Watches in the county level. And, and so it is a concept that is still growing mm -hmm. and a concept that works. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that there again, that perception thing, when, you, when, when people see that they have the Neighborhood would watch signs in their neighborhood and people had the opportunity to put the neighbor watch stickers on their on their outbuildings and the front door of their residence it gives that perpetrator one more thing thing to think about that maybe somebody's watching me or somebody's and it's not only just the watching part there's and i'm sure officer nichols goes into great detail about home safety and home mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. about motion lights uh, better locks than maybe you have in your home and take an inventory of your home and your property. We were talking earlier about inventory and your, mm -hmm. your drugs. Well, it's the same thing here. You know, you should have a list of all your, you know, your TVs, your VCRs, your, your, your anything, any expensive item that you don't want to lose or if it does get taken, you can identify. You should have that logged and recorded and put in a safe place. Even taking pictures. I always recommended people to walk around with a camera and take pictures mm -hmm. of things in their home. And even if, you know, now we don't have as much of the video camcorders as we used to have, but walk around and actually identify this. This is a, you know, a Sony 19-inch TV, serial number XYZ, you know, so that it's positively identified and you can identify it as yours. Because when the stuff gets stolen, it, it doesn't get sold back here. It gets sold in Chicago, Milwaukee, you know, you, who knows, uh, Green Bay and farther out. So... Um, and every municipality has different rules and regulations dealing with pawn shops and places that deal with, with that type of inventory. And um, I know before I left, and I don't know if they continued, but we were working in Northeastern Wisconsin, crime prevention officers were working on uh, putting together a better network, working with the pawn shops and, and, and the, the trade and sell places like that so that uh, if somebody came in with a three, four, five TVs, uh -huh they would report that sure. mm -hmm. to the local law enforcement authorities. Real quickly before we, because I want to, before we run out of time, I want to do a couple of crime prevention things, especially this time of year with people buying a lot of stuff for mm -hmm. gifts and what have you. Um, but if someone's interested in starting a neighborhood watch, um, obviously they don't already know their neighbors, so do you recommend that they knock on neighbors' doors absolutely. or contact the police department and you help with that? No, absolutely. They can, uh, they can start if they want to call, uh, call me. I can give them the, uh, give them the information. Um, we have a couple of books. Um, one's the Home Security Handbook, and the other is the, uh, is the Neighborhood Watch Block Captain's Guide. Okay. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, have them go knock on the doors, get their names, telephone numbers, email addresses, set up a meeting, uh, have the neighbors come in, uh, whether it's at a, they can go to a church or the YMCA or Boys and Girls Club, anything, uh, and get together and meet. Um, invite the police officers from that area. 
um, and then we can talk about some problems that may be going on um, okay. and, and remedy the, the, you know, the problems with the police department. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, your number is the Oshkosh PD, 237, or 236-5700. That's correct. Right? All That's right. Correct. Um, obviously, we're, we're right about at Christmas time here. People are running around, still doing last minute shopping. They're going to be getting gifts. Mm -hmm. Those boxes are going to be sitting out for the trash. Well, they shouldn't mm -hmm. be sitting out with the trash. They should be sitting in a recycling bin. But there nonetheless, go. they're yep. going to be out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some real quick ways for people to be able to keep their belongings and their own person safe as they're doing last minute shopping? and getting and receiving or, or giving and receiving gifts sure uh, <laughs> the the best thing is is if you're if you're at a uh, shopping complex um, put the stuff in your trunk um, don't leave it sitting out so that somebody can just peek in a window and say hey look at look at these gifts smash a window grab it um, put it in the trunk um, once you know once you get home make sure that you put it in a, in a secure place make sure that you're Doors uh, of your home are locked all the time, and your car car okay. doors. Um, uh, we get a lot of those around this time that say, oh yeah, I forgot to lock the door and something was stolen. <laughs> um, but just secure it. Um, as you were mentioning, uh, after, after the gifts are opened and they take the boxes, just don't throw them out on the curb because uh, a burglar might be coming by and looking and saying, hey, look what they just got. You know, brand new 55 inch LCD TV, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know or, or a new stereo or something else. And they'll wait until you leave and they'll know what they're gonna be looking for if they have their mind on it. Cut the cardboard up, put it in the recycling bin, um, keep it in your garage until the day that the, the you know, the, the sanitation uh, mm. people come through. That's a good idea. You know, just keep it out of sight. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, the best, best, prevent, uh, best prevention is take the opportunity out of the crime triangle. Don't mm. give them that opportunity at all uh, to, to steal anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, real quickly, you had talked to me uh, in kind of preparing for the show mm -hmm. about home security mm -hmm. and that you all can actually come out. You've got a checklist of home security that people can go through on their own. Absolutely. But if not, the police department can do it with them or for them. Just share that with us a little bit. Sure, absolutely. In our home security uh, handbook, we do have a checklist, uh, and the checklist goes through locks, doors, lighting, landscaping, everything uh, to make your home secure. Um, you know, we can't guarantee one hundred percent that your your home is going to be burglar proof, but it's going to take uh, those. Uh, uh, subjects into consideration make sure that you have the proper locks the proper lighting and if uh, if you, you don't know what the book is telling you what to look for give us a call at the police department and we'll be more than happy to come out and do a, a home security survey uh, with you okay all right excellent okay. thank you very much to both of you well, for you're being welcome. here it's been fascinating and merry christmas, merry christmas to you. both merry of you and merry christmas yeah. to you also we thank will you. see you nice next time you. until nice then take good care keep your eye on us we've got our eye on oshkosh